Have you ever had a crisis of meaning? Have you ever been like paralyzed by a choice? Maybe suffered that crazy thing called dread or angst? Well, you're in luck. Today, we're going to talk about existential despair. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Danny from Buddy Randy. What's up, Randy? Yo, Danny. So you came up with the topic of existential despair. Do you was, feeling despair? <laughs> dude, I was thinking about it because like the whole like course of life is just messed up nowadays. It's like the whole goal of everything that you do is just accumulate more money and then you get the more money and it doesn't fulfill anything at all. And it's just like yeah. this endless hedonic treadmill that never ends. And there's no dude, meaning. There's humanity. And the, yeah, it's humanity, dude. No meaning, dude. I was just talking. It's funny we were talking last night because uh, Anna was like, she was like, she was like, God, they're putting AI in everything. Like, you know, it's just ridiculous. Like, she was looking at a yoga mat that had AI in it, right? Like, what, what could that possibly oh serve? God. But I was like, I was like, don't you see the progression that they're trying to do? They're trying to put AI in these things. Then you're gonna have like a robot vacuum that talks to you and like tells you the weather. And eventually, we're gonna work up to Android so we can have slaves. And it's like it's like crazy, but that's like the progression. I'm like, really. Yeah. It's insane. Like, and it's like, but then we're going to have even less meaning because then we're not going to have work. And it's like, we do these things that like are, there's all these things that we produce that are so beneficial, but we use them in ways or we end up doing things with them that just make them like devoid, I think, or strips us of purpose, which I think is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's like, I, I was thinking about it also about these like big freaking dinosaurs of people who just accumulated as much money as they can. And it's not like they're doing it back in the Henry Ford type of fashion where he paid his employees the highest that possible that the market could bear so that they wouldn't go anywhere else. They're like literally paying their employees the least possible so that they can barely survive and they have to go get another job somewhere else. And it's just creating this like almost unlivable reality. It is. Oh, it absolutely is, dude. I mean, like, I forget what the exact number is because then I it's like it's it's like less than 20 people have the have the accumulated wealth of the bottom like 95 percent of people or something and that's not far off from the actual fact i forget the actual number is but that's pretty close like mm -hmm. it's absurd when you think about it yeah like there's like almost what almost like 8 billion people or something like mm -hmm. think about that i'm not talking about just the u.s we're talking about the global like it's yeah. it's just I think, ridiculous. I think people need to start watching Les Miserables again and learn about the French Revolution. French Revolution, I know. Yeah, right. They were like, "We are not messing around. We're cutting all their heads off." <laughs> no, <laughs> it's like we might get some. We might get some innocent people, but that's okay. Cover yeah. our bases, right? George yeah. Michael when he's a, he wants to get a French passport, he's like, "I like the way they think." <laughs> yeah, who's on Danjaru? Anyways, yeah, it so is. it's. It's, oh, a, it's a tricky thing. Well, it is because, you know, we make meaning. Nothing's meaningful in itself or inherently. I mean, I don't think so. But I also like the things that the things that gave us pleasure in a healthy way have all been stripped away. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. Well, like, you know, a while was... back you were hungry and then you had to go and find some food or hunt some food or something. And the process of that was like a game that you played and then it had the ultimate payoff because you would get to quench that hunger yeah. at the end. Now you just like push a button on an app, it gets flown to your house, and then you're just like, okay, I'll just well, eat know, way too much food. Do you know, like, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre was like, he had a falling out of Camus because Sartre was like very much into like Marxist humanism or humanist Marxist, however they suck, I forget the phrasing is. But anyway, um, and you know, it's funny, like, Marx, that's what he was worried about in Das Kapital. That's what he talks about. It's like, as when we transition from like doing things ourselves, creating stuff to selling our labor, we lost something that was like a crucial part of what gave our life meaning and value and purpose, which was solving problems, creating things on our own, realizing our powers in the world and being connected to our labor through production. Like, you know, there's a difference when, you know, you make like when you make something yourself, it feels good. It's unique. It's for you. But when you just go to work and you know, you do one little part of this large thing. It's like busy work. It's like, you know, it's hard to see why you're even bothering. Or, you know, when you have to work three jobs and you still can't even pay your bills and then you're seeing on social media people with these $300 shoes and $500 million yachts and stuff. It's like, you know, how can you even wrap your head around that? Well, the only the only redeeming quality of that is that I know from... <laughs> 
from meeting enough of them that they're all like miserable and suicidally depressed. This is the this is the funny thing too, though. It's not like they're even happy, you yeah. know. Like God, if they were happy, at least that'd be something, mm-hmm. you know. Like at least somebody figured it out. But like that's the that's what cracks me up the most. It's like they don't even know what the hell. Like people just, I think people make this assumption that if you have more money and stuff, you must know more. You must, you know what I mean? But you don't. Just like. Just like sitting on the Supreme Court does not mean you're smart or a good judge. No. <laughs> like at all. No. Doesn't mean anything. It just means that you're but, good at accumulating money. It doesn't mean Or you're good. Yeah, or you're good yeah, at It doesn't mean you're smarter, whatever, like, doesn't mean you're worth any more. Nothing. Yeah. No. And that's I think people forget this. And like we because we're taught to make all these comparisons. And I think that's this makes that existential like despair and just dread worse too. Because I think it's like you know, when when the existentialists talk about like that angst and that dread, focusing on that part of it, you know, it's like when you're faced with decisions, you know, that fear of like making the right decision for you, right? Like, and I felt that. I know you have too, right? Like when we were contemplating quitting our old jobs and switching careers, like uh-huh. that was a scary moment because it's like your face is like, one, if I make this choice and switch careers and it's wrong, I'm screwed, right? There's that fear that I'm like throwing away all the stuff that I already built. On the other hand, it's like, if I don't make that choice and stay, I'm already miserable, so I'm going to be mis- more miserable. It's like, you know, that's that kind of paralyzing fear that can cause you not to make a decision because you realize, like, this defines me. You mm-hmm. know, it's really serious. And I think, so it is very hard to kind of like, I don't know, it's, it's, I think it gets harder and harder to make decisions when meaning is so just devoid of everything. You know, just yeah, God. It's fabulous. Yeah. Everything. yeah, there's no, when there's no clear yes. Which is a really tricky thing because a lot of times recently there's no clear yes, and then here and then here's another thing. So like aside from aside from life being having I don't know whatever, but whatever it is, <laughs> whatever it is. So I like now there's like this anxiety epidemic sweeping across the world. Okay. Yeah. And I heard recently that uh, unconscious anger oftentimes in the forge of the form of rage will manifest as anxiety. I could totally see that though. People are pissed, dude. Dude. (laughs) And like, go figure. This is like probably 20, 30 years after political correctness started when all of a sudden you couldn't think the way you wanted, you couldn't be the way you wanted. All of a sudden you had to stifle everything that was natural to you to appeal to everyone in humanity. And that causes insane unconscious anger. Not only that, but what about the fact that like you have generations of people, especially in like our country, who have done what they were told to do that would make them successful, go to college, come out with egregious debt that they can't even afford, faced with a world where they can't even buy a house, get a car, can't even do the things that their parents could do when they were like 10 years younger than them. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I think that's a huge part of it is like we've we've made it so hard we made it so unnecessarily hard to live when it should be the easiest time to live. Cause it meant, and that's the weird. And that's also, I think the thing that's like causes so much anxiety and also despair is like on the one side, it's like, it is the easiest time to live. Like we can, mm-hmm. you can see that, like, you know, we have healthcare, all this stuff that's like good, but is it really hand, like, living? Yeah, exactly. And that's the, I think that's the other side of it. That this anxiety is coming up because people just like, you know, I don't know. I think back in the day, like we didn't have so much ongoing stress in our lives. Like we created so much stress with communication, with instant access to things, and like all this that I think well, you also know. Also, just the the we spare don't, time that we have. It. Like even yeah. even what even though people are working two jobs, it's they're not actually working most of the time. And like there's that saying, the devil, the idle hands are the devil's play thing. Like yeah. you know, people are only miserable when they have enough time to think about if they are miserable. And so I think that's part of it, too, because there's just so much time. And Well, and it's so easy to just waste time scrolling, looking at things, looking at people that have more than you or that you presumably do, because it's like half of it's. I mean, like, I love when you see stuff on like YouTube influencers and stuff where like they're renting all this crap to appear a certain way. You well, know, that's, but they really that's like, what started you know, the whole freaking craze. Ty Lopez in his garage. He's like. Mm-hmm. This is my Lamborghini, but this isn't the most important thing. These are my books. Yeah. <laughs> he rented the Lamborghini and probably rented the freaking books. <laughs> right. Or he went to like one of those free book drops and just took mm-hmm. them. Yeah, right. Mm. Yes. I mean, I don't know. What do you 
how do you how do you deal with this though because you know it's, this is actually it was funny when you messaged me this topic the other day like it was funny because i was just talking to anna about this because like we were both just talking about this like how like it's so hard sometimes to like to like feel optimistic about the future or to like you know to even like think that like the things you're doing are gonna pay off because like it just seems like everything is aimed to rip you off now mm -hmm. to put you down like and like it so it is really difficult to see that so like what do you do when you're faced with this despair and like yeah i've been struggling with it a lot this past week because like you know you do all this stuff that you're supposed to do and eventually you get to where you're supposed to be secure and whatever but it's like you never feel freaking secure because it's like well there could be another financial collapse the bank could just lose all your money and be like hey sorry and well because that's, yeah that's all an illusion because you can only do what you can for yourself you can't control all that stuff right yeah so it's like you can do your best to sell yourself up as best as you can but like i mean you, there could be like you could have your money in something and it could be gone the next day i remember mm -hmm. 2008 remember when people lost their their retirement funds like entirely yep like that was insane Yep. And like, so like, it could all go away in an instant. So, like, yeah, I mean, there is that. Like, you can only yeah, like freaking so Enron. Yeah. That's why, yeah, that's they why just we really everything. do need a French Revolution. Like, this whole thing against cruel and unusual punishment, I think we should reinstate yeah. cruel and unusual punishment for maybe like 10 years to just get people to stop acting so messed up. And then eventually, especially like, like these these uh, these business majors yeah especially yeah exactly the the white collar crime like take care of that for 10 years like clean stuff up to where people actually live a life of value and yeah. virtue and stuff like that and then yeah we can go back to no cruel and unusual well you know it's like dude like i mean like come on like the fact that like God, when i was like adjuncting making you know not that much money and i was paying more taxes than Bezos. you know it's like Mm -hmm. and it's like and yet how much is they are they using the roads for infrastructure all that stuff that they're destroying and they're paying nothing like you know mm -hmm. so it is it does seem really wildly unfair and it's hard you know i think camu was on to something though when he talks about absurdity because like you know this world is a construct we're meaning it's something we made up it's only mm -hmm. as meaningful as we make it and you know i think sometimes it is important just to like see it as absurd and realize that like it is absurd like you can only create meaning for yourself so much and the world is always going to be absurd the human condition is only going to be absurd we can ask the universe as much as we want why 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 it's never going to respond you know like and i think there is something to that that like maybe that is is that the right response just like this is absurd I'll just do the best I can for myself and do what's right for me because there's nothing else I can do. You know? Yeah. It's a really tricky question. I don't I have no idea how to deal with existential despair. Because it's I think I think you just have to Well, they all give us different responses too. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't in agreement. Like I really think you need to go back to like you can't look at any type of modern goal of good living because that's all broken. Like, it's just crazy how I, I think it was like. Because our modern Steve notion Jobs of good or... living is just like buying crap. Right. And having more crap and being able to compare ourselves to other people and be like, I got more stuff. Therefore, I'm more valuable. <laughs> yeah. But it's like people people are so hypocritical just because they're incentivized to gain as much money as quickly as possible. And so they do stuff that's just like madness. Like, I remember yeah. I was reading in Steve Jobs' biography how he like he invented the iphone the ipad all this stuff and yet he did not allow his children to use them he sent his kids to a school where they were not allowed to use them and like that's what a ton of people are doing in silicon valley so like they're all creating this addictive like super highly mm -hmm. addictive technology and, and like they're they spreading it out to everyone all across the world and then they're saying ah, not our children no that's that's yeah. okay and it's just like what kind, of, what kind of hypocritical life do you live where you just like do that stuff to other people, but not to you? Because you just don't care, you know? And mm -hmm. the funny thing is, but I think this is where I think existentialism and stuff is important because at the end of the day, you live with that. You know, I, I often wonder sometimes whether their misery, because all these people are miserable, isn't tied to unconsciously, you know, kind of like self-hate or guilt and stuff for like, because mm -hmm. they know what they're doing. I don't care. You can say whatever you want. They 
they have to be somewhat aware of what they're doing. Well, they definitely are. If they're not letting their kids on their freaking phones, they definitely are 100% aware of what they're doing, right? Yeah. So it's like, you know, I do wonder that. And I think that's the other side of this, which is, you know, like, we have to live with ourselves, right? And like, we live in the world we create, you know, and I think that's a big part of this. So doing stuff more like that's aligned with our real values is way more important at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. That's the other funny thing. Like we also like created the world where like, we we tell people that they get all this crap as fast as they can you know it's like it's like i think i might have mentioned this before but it's like i always laugh when i read things like about like science journals like having to attract stuff because there was like fraudulent stuff it's like no oh, kidding awesome. there was because all you've told people is you have to get aids you have to do the best but you've never told them that the work mattered it just mattered what the results were so it's like of course they're going to do that because that'll move them forward faster right and that's mm -hmm. all that matters is the results like yeah, I think we're too results oriented. That's part of the problem. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Yeah, the uh, yeah, I guess I guess dealing with um, existential despair, you kind of have to start listening to yourself and yeah. figuring out what to do with that. You have to listen to yourself. I think like Nietzsche, you know, for Nietzsche, it's like I think a lot more of like listening to yourself, knowing yourself, and like setting goals and achievements for yourself right like giving yourself purpose literally is one way to address it right for Camus it's more of like a kind of almost pa it's like a recognition of the absurd and almost passive like a realization that nothing you do will matter so like mm -hmm. then it, nothing matters therefore you can do whatever you want right everything's permitted so in that sense it's like doing what's aligned with you I think for all the existentialists we get this realization that like you know you can live however you want in the world all you have to do is do it, right? Mm -hmm. The only thing stopping you is you. So, like, I think understanding that is also important. You know, like, you can make changes in your life that can hopefully help with that emptiness of meaning and try and fill it with, like, meaning or values that work for you. But you have to find them. You have to be self-aware, and it takes time. It's hard. Yeah. So I think that's the other frustration. There is no, like, 24-hour fix, right? This is, like... You know, dealing with it can take time and it can be very hard. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, like, it's one of those things where it can, uh, because it's so easy to become outcome focused, like results oriented. And you're like, well, oh, yeah. yeah, I'll fix everything with myself once I get to this thing that I have. And dude, and you know, that is like the famous thing, right? Like, oh, we'll, we'll get this once we have X, Y, and Z taken care of. Like when all this stuff's perfect, then we'll move on to the next thing. It's like, well, it never is going to be perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like you can gain the whole world, but what's the worth of it if you lose yourself in doing so? And it's kind of like, I think maybe you had to, again, this is just something that could work, but like maybe just trying to limit these newer types of things like all these modern inventions like limit them go back to doing stuff old style maybe those people who like listen to vinyl records and like you know do their own laundry by hand and and plant yeah. stuff in the backyard and have a chicken farm maybe they're onto something who knows well i mean that's the funny thing is there's so many different examples of how to live right you have the you still have monks you know we still have there's still some indigenous tribes living you know in ways that are like for us very outdated but that's still working for them like you know like other than the encroachment of the you know modern world on them, I guess. But you know, it is, it's crazy. There's so many other ways we that always fascinated me. It was like we've made the world this way, but it could be totally different. Like this doesn't have to be the way it is. But we just it is, it's by default. Like it was this way when we got here, so now it's this way kind of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Like it's kind of interesting when you think about that, that we can remake it anything we wanted. And so you have to wonder like why this system? Because money is so funny because it's like it's such an empty thing. You know, I think that's why people that like do start chasing it, they can't stop because there is no like there is no point at which you say I have enough. I've reached my goal because guess what? You can always go higher. There's always somebody else that has more. You can mm -hmm. always raise the bar. So it's yeah. like, yeah. And, and, you're, oh, and no matter how much money you have, there's always going to be moments where you feel miserable. There's always going to be moments where you feel not good enough. And then you be, you're like, oh, well, that must just be because they have more money. If I had that, then I wouldn't feel this. So let's go do that. Well, and it's like like every famous person has ever said, right? The money also doesn't solve your problems. That's mm -hmm. the funny thing. It solves certain specific problems. Other than that, it doesn't solve anything. It doesn't fix you, you know? Yeah. yeah.
That's and it gives crazy. you more problems. Like I think I think it's pretty crazy how like back maybe in the nineties there was that more money, more problems song. And people still, they're just like, no, more money is less problems. And it's like, no, nah, maybe not. Maybe not, right? It changes a lot of things, especially in a world where everything's valued based on money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Existential. Did we said we were going to talk about something else in this existential despair episode? You remember what it was? Something that you were just talking about. Oh, Um, oh, yeah. I think that was in the... Uh, oh, that was... I was talking about the goals thing. Just because that was interesting. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I could this mention could that. be That another. This could be another way to not have actually. some despair. This is a helpful method. Yeah, it's like when you're trying to like, we've both done this a lot. When you're trying to like change things or make the right decision, like both of us have a habit of writing down goals and journals, you know, and like making lists. Because I think it is a helpful way. They say like you know they always. I've always read that like you're forty percent more likely to accomplish things if you write them down. But I was laughing because I had messaged you the other night because I, I have like a. a uh, planner and i happened to stumble upon i had made a list in the back of goals i wanted to accomplish for like programming because we were this is back when we were learning it was like probably a couple of years ago and i hadn't looked at it again i just forgot it was there and i found it and they were all completed and i was like it's kind of funny because like the more i do that the more i write down lists of things i want to accomplish which gives my life meaning because it gives me purpose it's funny that i noticed like the more it creates like a little mini commitment in my brain that i don't even realize is there And like it just gets done. It's kind of cool how that works out. Yeah, that's awesome. Because that, I mean, that's probably like the closest thing you could actually do to doing something for your own survival is giving yourself goals <laughs> that are valuable for yourself and then ticking them off. yeah. You know, it's like one of the hardest things to do living in this world, I think, because like that impulse to conform is so strong, right? To be like everybody else. And I think like, This one thing I always loved about the existentialists is they all point out like it is hard to be yourself. That's like one of the hardest things to do because it means being alone. Because anytime you interact with other people, they want you to be like them. They want you to conform. They want you to do these things. So it's like it is really hard to be like just an individual. And I think that's why why so many people are struggling with anxiety, depression, like all these factors that we've been talking about. And it's like really hard to like break free of that. So I think the only way is to like start focusing on yourself. I, like, is this really right for me? Why, why am I doing this? Am I doing it for me or for other people? You know, why am I, why do I feel obliged to do these things? Like, are they my obligations or are they obligations that people are placing on me? Like, start thinking in those terms and try and figure out, like, what life do I really want? Yeah. When I was when I was experiencing some of the existential despair the other day, it was pretty crazy like to uh try to imagine other people having as terrible feelings as I was having at that moment. Cuz Yeah. everybody else looked like they had, you know, no problems whatsoever, but you can't tell from looking at other people, and that's the tricky part. Well, that's the funny thing, right? Because we've all been trained that when we're out in the world to put that mask on so no one can read us because for like lots of reasons, right? Because one, it's deemed, you know, it's not etiquette and not part of the norms to like express that stuff. I think it's also been damaging to us, you know? Think about it. How often do you have like real conversations with people? about things that really matter. Like, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's it's rarely like, with you but yeah, exactly, yeah right? With very few people, that's what I mean. Like, and people are uncomfortable about it. I think this is one of the other things that's difficult when you're trying, like when you're struggling with this, is like having something to talk to can be so helpful. But when you only have yourself, it's really hard. So like journaling is a very good method to kind of get that out there and have a conversation or a dialogue, mm -hmm. even with yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Anything else No. you want to add? No, that's all. All right. Well, there you have it. Existential dread. I mean, you know, I think, or despair, which is similar anyway. You know, I think it is hard. It's going to be with us. But if you like this episode, please like, share, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Even leave a review. You can check us out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. We'll be back later this week with another episode. Until then, later, Andy. Later, Danny.